Hey YouTube, LJ Gamble, finally back with an update on my hydrogen system. Sorry it's been so long guys, I've been a long couple months. Um, I've been on and off of putting the system on. Uh, I had my car painted so I didn't have my car for like three weeks. And it's been super cold this winter now. So finally got a good day. Uh, finally put it back on. This is the second time the new system has been on. Uh, had had a couple of problems here and there, just uh, ironing out some things before I do video, just because uh, I want it to be the final uh, project, and it's working now. Just finally got it back. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna get into it. Completely changed the system around. Um, the old system. I just go over real quick. The old system was a uh, a juice bottle that I had here. Didn't work out. Um, had long, the long three inch lines running all the way over here to the cell because the cell is below, kind of below the battery there. It's on the on the bottom of the chassis. Um, that's how it was before. It went all the way over there, and then went into a bubbler and all that junk. And it was just um, real basic. Uh, the only way I could monitor the amps that it was pulling was um, I have a meter in the car now, but um, the only way I could control the amps was by adjusting the mixture level. Um, and that was all I could do. But with that mixture level, it wasn't high enough concentration of KOH to protect it um, during the winter, so it would have been it would have been freezing. So what I did, first of all, really uh, potent mix of um, KOH and distilled water, somewhere around 32 tablespoons in one gallon. Uh, this mixture is, and I had to keep up in it till it would stop freezing. I was using my freezer, so that's negative whatever 20 or 15 somewhere around there so yeah there's that but then also since it's such a high concentration i had to get a pwm this right here is the pwm uh, for those who don't know what that stands for it's a pulse width modulator um, just kind of control allows me to control with a dial um, how many how much uh, amperage this thing is going to pull the uh, cell and then this here i added because the juice bottle I had before, thin plastic, just it wouldn't handle the heat or the cold, and it was um, cracking and it was a mess. So I got this. This is a windshield washer reservoir out of some kind of Kia. Fits in here perfectly. Um, yeah, just it just fits perfectly. I've got um, this here is the the inlet from uh, the uh, cell. This this tube here. Uh, the outlet is right here, it goes to a small water pump. This is a real small pump, uh, doesn't draw hardly any amps, just 12 volt. It's high temp um, and everything, it's pretty quiet. Um, I had it mounted to the chassis before, but it was it made it super loud. It would vibrate right up and I would hear it so bad in the, in the, the cab and also on the outside. So I just disconnected. Uh, just took that off of there. It's just sitting there. It's pretty quiet now. Um, then this this goes down into the cell, into the bottom of the cell, and just it just circulates through. Um, get real good circulation. Keeps my amp draw uh, constant. Everything. Um, this here, I added this top and everything to screw on top. Just from another bottle, if you can see, it's from the top. I cut it up. It's all custom. This here is a one-way check valve. I had a problem because I have a one-way check valve here, and um, you got to be careful because whatever you have in the bubbler, this is the bubbler here. I made the bubbler. It's real nice. It's really hard to see. I'm sorry. Um, it's a piece of um, acrylic tube, um, about a foot long. It's got a cap on the end with the tube running in and a uh, brass filter, so it disperses the bubbles. And then in the top here. Inside of this here is a couple um, Brillo, small pieces of Brillo pad um, so that I don't get any splash up from the um, what I have in there is just uh, antifreeze coolant um, to keep it from freezing. I did a lot of research. I was going to do distilled water and alcohol, but the alcohol would evaporate off and I would just have a lot more maintenance and I read that it was okay um, to just use uh, antifreeze. In the bubbler, so the bubbler is filled about halfway, right about there. Uh, man, I really wish you could see it. It's a really nice uh, design bubbler, um, and then it just goes into the intake. 
um, right here, uh, like I was saying, anyways, like I was saying, um, you got to be careful because when you turn the system off, the electrolyte is very warm, um, pretty hot, along with all the engine and everything. So this container, since the air in the air in the top is hot, it'll and when it cools down, it'll draw a vacuum, and it'll draw a vacuum out of this hose here, which is the only way it can, and it'll it'll draw your whatever you have in the bubbler into the reservoir, into the electrolyte reservoir. And uh, I had a problem with that. Came out one day, and this was green. <laughs> it had drawn all the antifreeze out of here into here, even though I had a one-way check valve here. So to solve that, I put another one here, um, and the flow is this way. It can only flow this way. So when it draws a vacuum, it'll draw the air from here first, because there's not as much resistance as uh, drawing water up through there. So it'll just shh and uh, draw the air in there. But when it's under pressure, it's enough pressure to keep it closed. It keeps the check valve closed. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, yeah, I have the same um, 30 amp relay right there. Um, this is a 40 amp PWM. And uh, I did not want to put it in the cab because I would have had to run all these large gate wires into the cab and have it in there. I hope I hope I don't have any heat problems in the summer. Uh, this particular PWM has a couple um, has a place where you can put on a five volt it has a five volt source on it, so you can put a I could put a five volt fan on here if I want to, which I, I actually plan to do that in the summer because I anticipate this thing is going to get too warm, and I will need a fan in there. There's like six heat sinks in, on the bottom. This is actually upside down, but yeah, uh, I relocated the. Um, a potentiometer that was on it because it was just a knob right there. I used a piece of this is a Ethernet co uh, cable, so it has uh, enough wires because uh, the um, potentiometer had six points on it where it connected to the uh, board, both sides of the. It was like two potentiometers in one, one on each side. So yeah, I had to get this because so it would have enough uh, wires in it to solder up to both ends. So this runs into the cab right back here. Made myself another um, grommet to go back through the firewall right there. Um, so yeah, it goes in there. Um, that's pretty much it for that. Oh, and I'm using my upgraded cell as more plates. I think it's nine plates. I have another video on just that, just to sell out. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm using now. Um, so yeah, in the cab I also did some stuff. I didn't show this in any of my other videos because I hadn't had it yet. Right here in the dash, I put uh, these two gauges. I, I put them in there real nice. There I am, just focus so you can see how nice they're in there. They fit in there perfectly. They're real small. They were they weren't they're pretty cheap, ten bucks each, something like that. Um. Yeah. This is an amp gauge. This is a volt gauge. Because I didn't have a volt gauge, just this is just battery voltage. That's all it tells me. It doesn't tell me how many volts the uh, the uh, cell is getting. I might hook it up to just do that. It's really easy. Just change the wire. This is the amps. This will tell you how many amps the cell is drawing. These work great. You just turn them on real quick, just so you can see them right there. They're kind of hard to see, but yeah. Um, on the bottom here, sorry, let me undo this. With the... Underneath, you saw before, I just had a switch down here, turn the, turn the system on and off. Now, under here, I have the switch plus the potentiometer to control the amp draw and voltage that the cell gets. So I can control my amps really easy as the uh, water heats up and cools down or whatever. I can can uh, turn it up and down. And here's the switch, so I turn the system on and off completely. So yeah, um, I have the Volo chip still. Not sure how good that's working or if it's really doing anything. I will see here when I do some mileage tests. Um, I didn't have the system on long enough the last time before I just fixed it today to tell what kind of mileage I was getting. So hopefully I'll do that. Also, another thing, I've got this here. This is a uh, turbo gauge. That's the brand. It's um, just a scan gauge. Um, I use it so 
So like it'll tell me miles to the gallon and all kinds of stuff. It's everything that a uh, uh, scan gauge does. It's just the off brand of it. It was cheap. Um, yeah, it'll tell me so I can monitor instant miles per gallon, gallon uh, le uh, gallons per hour, all that stuff, all that good stuff. Um, just good to have. Fits there perfectly. Put that in. Plugs right into the OBD2 port, right there, right there. Um, so yeah, uh, let me start it up so you can see it running real quick. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to see the amp draw here. Okay, so, whoops, stole it. Okay, let me turn it down just a tad. The electrolyte is pretty warm right now. Okay, so right there we're at 20 amps. Sorry, the glare is kind of hard to see. Uh, yeah, it's hard during the daytime, but it's reading 19.47, around 19, 19 uh, amps, 14 volts. Sorry you can't see that. Wish you could. There's 14. Uh, this is 16, 14. 18, it, jump, it jumps around a little bit, especially when it's just idling. It's going down now, I can turn it back up. Uh, I like to keep it around 20, just so I don't get the system too hot. Uh, the engine here. See it going. Oh, okay. Uh, we don't have enough pressure built up yet to get the bubbler going, but I'm going to start up here in just a minute. Uh, you can see it flowing right there. Oh, there it goes. Okay, the bubbler's going. Uh, it's real hard to see. I'm sorry. Uh, there you go. There's a good shot of it. Right there, there's the bubbler going. She's bubbling real nice. I'm getting a lot of gas out of this. Oh, I'm going. I, I'll do another video on just. Uh, I'm going to disconnect the, uh, the end of the bubbler here. And uh, run it into a bucket so I can uh, measure liters per minute. I'm almost 100% positive, about 90% positive that um, I'm getting at least a liter per minute out of this cell, if not more, at 20 amps, around 20 amps. So yeah, that's that, that's the system there. You can see right here. Uh, you can't the, the water's real clear uh, right there. You can kind of tell just a little bit. It's flowing. This is a really nice pump. Doesn't go too fast. You can see it just keeps the flow of um, electrolyte real, real nice. Keeps the water level in the cell nice. And uh, yeah, you can see really well that it's bubbling up. You get quite a bit of uh, gas out of it. So yeah, I'm gonna do some tests. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just post them below. Um, this is a pretty good system I think I got now. Just need to go through some testing. And uh, yeah, so uh, leave any comments, let me know what you think. Subscribe, whatever, whatever you feel like doing. This is just uh, something fun for me. So uh, yeah, purely coming at this from a scientific view. Uh, yeah, I just want to see if it works. That's all. Um, so yeah, leave any comments, subscribe, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.